Now, there are a couple of things that are really interesting about pyrite, and uh, I'm super excited to tell you guys about it. So the history of the name of pyrite is that it actually like sparks when it's hit against other metals. So if you'll, if you're familiar with Latin and Greek roots and stuff, you'll probably notice that pyro is usually used with fire. So um, they named it pyrite because it actually is how early humans made fire because they would use the sparks from pyrite from hitting it to create flame, which is pretty cool. The second most interesting thing about pyrite, in my opinion, is that it can, the formation of pyrite can be somewhat mediated by microorganisms. So it, it's possible, it's not always, but it can be encouraged to grow by microorganisms in the water. And how this happens is the iron sulfide will be kind of floating or like the FES, so iron and sulfur, they'll be bonded together and just floating in the water. And in order to make pyrite, as we just barely saw, in order to make pyrite, it needs to have two, one iron and two sulfur. So when microorganisms are hanging out in the water and just this is available, but then there's sulfur, kind of some extraneous sulfur that's bonded to hydrogen. The microorganisms will eat the hydrogen away from the other sulfur, freeing that sulfur atom to bond with this little piece, thus creating the pyrite formula. So that I think is really, really interesting. It's not always a biological process, but it can be mediated is the, is the term by, by, by microorganisms, which I think is just so cool about pyrite. 